Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be working on our 2003 Z4. It's an E85 chassis code. And today we're gonna to be lowering it on coilovers. Okay guys, here's a before of the 2003 Z4. E85 chassis code once again. This thing, we just randomly seen it on Marketplace and we had to go ahead and scoop it up real quick. And it was actually only about 10 minutes away from us. So super lucky for us. However, a little bit less lucky for us, when we got there to look at it, there was actually a four foot snake in the engine bay. I had popped the hood, and as soon as I popped the hood to look in the engine bay, I seen the tail of the snake crawl down into the spender. If I can, I think I got that on video. I'll insert that video right here um, from my phone. Anyways, this car only has right on the dot 100,000 miles on it. Unlucky for the car, it's went a life of uh, not being maintained as well as it should be. But I've already maintained most of the things that's wrong with it. Um, so obviously I've already done spark plugs, wheel packs, oil change. And I didn't want to video that again just because I've done that so much. Like, if you want to see that, just go to one of my other videos. I'm not trying to bore people with the same exact content every single time. The other thing that we did was we found some wheels for it on Marketplace. Very cheap. And the problem is the wheels came off of a wrecked car, so the lips were very badly damaged. They were curb rashed. It looked just completely awful. And here's what we came up with. This is the, the wheels that we bought really cheap. I believe this was the damaged one actually. And it had about a dime sized chip completely just like right here. It was just completely gone. So what I did is I welded that up, ground it back down, shaped the wheel, primered it, painted it, and this is how they look now. We do have brand new brake rotors, we have brand new brake pads, brand new brake sensors. We have new tires on it, NGK spark plugs, Delphi coil packs. We have a couple other things, uh, obviously a fresh, fresh liquid molly oil change. But just to give you some info on the car, like I said, 100,000 miles, automatic. The top does not work, um, they never do. However, you can put it down manually. I tinted the side windows. I haven't tinted that window, I tried multiple times, but I'm not a professional tinter. Um, so that's why that window isn't tinted. I'll have to have the rear windshield and the front windshield done professionally because I just can't do it. However, I did a really good job on the sides and I'm happy with that. So this car, like I said, hadn't been maintained very well. And I bought it off of an older guy. He said he bought it for his wife. And he said that they didn't drive it very often. The last time they drove it was like at least two months before I seen it. And they just drove it to uh, about 45 minutes away and then back. The car has been sitting being unmaintained, had a bunch of codes on the dash, a bunch of stuff wrong, and yeah, so I've got most of, most of the problems with this, but you can see here, somebody has already painted, a lot of this car has already been painted, and I'm not sure why, but I assume at some point it's been in an accident on this side, this fender, or this headlight, is actually pointed up, it needs to be adjusted. And then if you see here, this is the clear coat that's running from somebody else's uh, repair on this front bumper. I'm assuming this front bumper was replaced as well. And then a really bad color match here. And then right here, there's some marks on it. I'm not sure why. Also, then you go over to the other side. And this has been painted too. There's like 180 grit sandpaper marks all in this quarter panel and it looks terrible. And if you look right there, there's paint on that seal. 
I'm not sure why they didn't just remove the seal before they painted it because it's barely hanging on anyways. And then this is gone. I don't know what's supposed to be there, but I guess I could look on the other side. Um, this piece here in the center, I have it, but it's broken. So, you know, I did put a shifter on it because the stock one was very terrible. That piece is missing. I want to do a muffler delete on it. Okay, so my plan with this car is right now my wife drives a 2006 uh, 530 XIT. It's all wheel drive, it's touring the wagon, station wagon, hatchback, whatever you want to call it. And it's slammed on some ISC coilovers. Well, I don't know about slammed, it's lowered on some ISC coilovers and 20 inch competition M5 wheels. And that's what she daily drives right now. And I don't really know that she's ever been like a huge fan of it. So I think I'm gonna sell that. And then this is gonna be her daily. So if you're interested in the wagon that we did this other coilover video on, I can link it down below if you need. But then, uh, you know, let me know and we're gonna drive this and sell the wagon. And I'm gonna get a work truck. I need a work truck so that I can haul, you know, broke down vehicles or, you know, whatever, haul the car to the track if I need to and not be afraid to, you know, run it hard. And here is what I ordered. These are the ISC N1 coilovers. These have the track porting. This is exactly what I put on the wagon, but these, however, are track ported and the wagon is street ported. I noticed that this design is different than the wagon, so hopefully there's no slop in it, like the other one was. Um, this is a lot thinner also, so I'm hoping that helps on getting it low, because the wagon is pretty, the wagon coilovers are maxed out and the, the car's not even low. I mean, it's on 20s, but it's not low. So, here are the front coilovers, fully adjustable. They do have camber adjustment. That's why I went ahead and got the N1 series. I've got these all the way maxed out. I've got these all the way maxed out. And then of course the rear height is adjustable. And then you've got all your dampening settings and everything else. This is exactly what comes in the box here. They actually threw me a tag frame in there too. That's awesome. So you got your grease for your threads, grease for, uh, let's see. Then we got rear springs, height adjustment. We've got the dampening adjustment. We've got the, the collar wrenches. These are the rear struts. Then we've got the front coilovers with the link bars. And that's pretty much it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started on this thing and let's get it low. You ready? All right, let's go. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is locate your jacking point. The BMWs have these jacking points right here. These are little plastic spots where you can roll your jack right under and jack it up on this point. Step two here, we're gonna open the door. We're gonna go ahead and pop the trunk and we're gonna pop the hood while we're at it. Once you pop your hood, you can locate your strut tower, and then these three bolts right here hold in your stock strut. Now we're gonna go ahead and jack the car up to a proper height. So once your car is jacked up to a good height, now you can slide your jack stand under, right under this rear jacking point. As for the front, as you can see, we're using the jacking point for the jack. So what you can do is slide your jack stand under the subframe and you can set it there. The next step we need to do is remove the wheel. BMWs have 17 millimeter lug bolts. We'll go over here. This is actually the socket I use for all of the BMWs. I know it's not a black socket, but I do use an impact on it and it seems to be doing fine. Then I'm gonna grab my impact. And I'm gonna grab a battery. Don't 
Don't worry, I did already loosen these while the car was still on the ground. Now we can remove the wheel. So here's the first look at our OEM strut. And if you pay attention, right here we have an end link and it goes from our sway bar to our strut. And these are our 16 millimeter bolts. So on the bottom bolt, I'm gonna grab this, the opposite side with the 16, and it takes a 16 on the other side as well. And then we're gonna just carefully get that on there. So I actually had a little bit better reach from the bottom of the car. As you can see, <laughs> I don't have very much room to work with. So this will be a slow process. This seems to be working the best though. Get that bolt off, got the impact here. Wanna take a 18 millimeter, I believe. And we're gonna take the main strut bolt off right here. Hopefully you can see that. should come out just like that no nut on the other side or anything and then it just pops right out blade bar still has all kinds of pressure on it so you can see that that's still jammed in there the three top bolts are 13s on the OEM ones just gonna zip these off watch your feet because this may fall once you get all three of these off especially if you're using an impact. Okay, it didn't fall on me, so that's good. But now we got that out, it just fell right out. Now we can maneuver this out of the way. This is a prime example of, it was a really good decision to go ahead and buy the full quill over versus lowering springs. Even though this car only has 100,000 miles on it, this is the stock and then this is the new. As you can see, the dust boot is just completely blown out as well as the bump stop. And I had some jiggling sounds, but my front end was very tight and I realize now that it was this top hat on this strut and the passenger side is actually a lot worse. So that's what was making the jiggling sound. And if we compare our new end links, you can see that these stock ones are very deteriorated and very blown out compared to these brand new ones. I'm definitely, definitely glad that I went with the full setup because this is complete trash. All that needs to be replaced anyways. So here is the new strut. And what I've done already is I went ahead and I bottomed this out because I'm wanting to go as low as possible. So I'll bottom this piece out, tighten this collar down, and then I tightened this collar down on this spring and this collar down, locking this collar in place. Now, if, the more you tighten this, the stiffer your spring's gonna be. So don't, don't, be, uh, don't tighten that down too tight thinking that you're gonna go lower because the spring is shorter, because that's incorrect. So to get both sides correct, on height, I measured from the top of this collar to the top of this collar with a caliper. And this right here is the exact same on both sides. If we look at the top of our new coilover, as you can see, we have these slotted holes with these four bolts. This is our camber adjustment. Went ahead and zeroed my camber out and then I snugged these. Even though they came straight out of the box like this, I went ahead and snugged them just to make sure that they were tight. So this is your dampening control knob. And all you gotta do is, there's a little rubber grommet right here, and you put this into there. And then what you can do is go all the way one direction, and then you count how many clicks there is till it stops. Just like that. And this one specifically has 34. So what I'm gonna do is set it directly in the middle, and I'm gonna go to 16. And right there, we should be set in the middle. That way I can adjust from there. On your top hat bolts, they're actually 12 millimeter instead of 13 millimeter like your OEM bolts. Anything else to look for when installing coilovers? I actually seen this the other day, but you need to make sure that these bolts 
are configured with the camber adjustment correctly. You could, on this car you can't, but on a, another car you could probably, you know, put it in like this and then your camber adjustment throws off your alignment and everything, but it needs to be like this so that you can control your camber how you're supposed to. So what we're gonna do now is go ahead and grab a bolt and we're going to set the coil over up in there and then we're gonna finger tighten a bolt onto it. Now we're gonna do the same with these two bolts. So as you can see, these older BMWs have slotted holes on the top of the strut tower for camber adjustment from the factory so you can do a proper alignment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to push it all the way inwards and my camber on the coilover is completely zeroed out so I'll have just a tiny bit of camber. When reinstalling the coilover back into this OEM sleeve right here. I think it's best to just put a jack under here. That way you can slowly control the level. That way it just slides right up in there, just like that. And I'm gonna put a little bit of pressure on it and make sure that that's seated properly. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take this 19 millimeter bolt. I wanna put it back through this bracket and then screw it back in to this collar. Once we've confirmed that the coilover is seated properly into this sleeve, I'm gonna take this 18 millimeter bolt, put it through this bracket and back into this collar and go ahead and tighten it down. Just like that. So now it's time to go ahead and put this end link back on. The top is very easy. All you gotta do, slide it right through the coilover mount and then it does have a locking thread on there. These are 17 millimeter. And then you can take a five millimeter Allen key and hold this. As far as this bottom bolt goes, you can put a five millimeter Allen key in the end and then you can hold it with a 17 millimeter wrench and turn it that way. As simple as that, your front coil over is installed. Repeat on the other side. Go ahead and lower your jack. And put your lug bolts back in. So once you've got your wheel back on, as you can see, there's a whole lot less wheel gap than we had. And if you take a look here, this is monster trucking. Anyways, let's go back here to our trunk, pop open our trunk, and you'll notice that mine is actually missing a couple bolts, but this bolt needs to come out, as well as this bolt here, and this plastic clip here. Now the easiest way to remove that plastic clip that I've found is with these wire cutters and I don't clamp hard I just pull it right out there's that piece and there's that piece put that to the side and then we'll pull this plastic piece out just like that so your rear bolts are actually under this foam right here As you can tell, nobody has messed with it before I have. So these bolts are 13 millimeter bolts. One here and one on the other side does need to come out. It's in these bolts, but I haven't completely taken it out yet. Let's go ahead and move to the wheel. So here is the stock strut. At the very bottom of that, right here, you'll find an 18 millimeter bolt. Go ahead and remove that and then stand out of the way of this because most likely it's gonna drop. Now we can go back to the top and go ahead and loosen these bolts the rest of the way. 
and just like that it fell right out as you can see this one's really really blown out too i'm glad that we replaced these okay this is what comes with your rear suspension this here it goes on top of the spring just like this right here and it does have a plastic seat so it doesn't make any noise against the metal that will go just like that the bottom will go just like this and just like that so if you want to barely lower your car you can raise this or lower it depending on the height that you want however i'm not recommending this whatsoever to anybody but i'm going to run it without this collar because it just doesn't go low enough for my liking as i stated before this car is going full hot boy mode it'll give me about another half inch of low now we put our plastic seat just like that right there the spring is out i'm going to go ahead and clean up the spring perch because there's a whole bunch of dust and dirt and rocks in here so here's our oem spring versus our new spring as you can tell the height difference is massive i want to go ahead and install this new spring I'm just going to push down with my hands and get this thing locked in place just like that as you can see it won't go side to side and then once I put the new strut in there it'll pull it up so there will be no slack in it like that this is the prime opportunity to go ahead and adjust your dampening right now and that's 16 what I want to do now is go ahead and put this where it goes up there and then I want to finger tighten the bolts like we did on the front I'm gonna go ahead and put some pressure on this lower control arm until I can get this strut this bolt into here now you can go up top and you can go ahead and tighten these 12 millimeter bolts you can put that padding back and slide our panel back into place and don't forget to put your plastic pin back in Now we can go ahead and release the pressure from the lower control arm so I can show you that there's no slack in the spring. We can lower the car and see how low she is. Mm, I hope it settles. Now you can sit back and enjoy your hard work. Well, let's go take her for a spin. So for anybody wondering, if your top doesn't go down, you can actually unlock it manually. Um, but if this motor is also bad, which is the motor that unlocks it, you can take a Torx bit and unlock it manually. Just ignore my decoration lights. Those are soon to be fixed. <laughs> so I figured we would do a yard test. Um, I mowed the yard today was two and a half inches long so here's a yard test the grass with 
with the car. No reason. I'm not always this weird. Alright guys, that'll be the end of this video. I really do appreciate you watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share if this is something you're interested in. And by the way, here is the E61 530 XIT. It is also lowered on brand new ISC suspension coilovers. If anybody's interested in it, hit me up on Instagram, Miller Built Customs, and maybe we can work out a deal. I will not be letting these wheels go. It'll be on a stock set of wheels, but uh, other than that, it'll be just as is. The car is quite maintained. It's got a bubble shifter. That's the only thing that's aftermarket inside. You have some roof racks to go with it. It's got a black roof, new brakes, painted brake calipers. It's uh, the three liter N52. And that'll be the end of this video. Thanks for watching.